I got a question for you as a struggling math student. Let's okay. see, let's see and let's give some uh, practical teaching advice. So you have a kid in your classroom at the high school level, I'm sure you see this all the time, who mm -hmm. struggles with math. Um, what, what are some of the things that you try to develop in that student to, to help them see potential? And is it okay if a student walks out of your class not knowing math? As, Maybe I, I'm going to put you on the spot there. Uh, that's to me that that is OK. I understand right. that math is is not for everybody. And I tell my kids that like I know math, not everybody's crazy like me and loves math. Right. Like right. Um, and, you know, if somebody had to plunk me into like a history class, that would probably be a bad thing because right. that is not my strong suit. Right. Um, we all have our, our different things. Um, but for those for those struggling math kids, for me, the biggest thing is to build their confidence. Right. Because a lot of times that's what it is. And, you know, whether that be a positive word or, you know, putting a sticker on their test, you know, sometimes we, we do this. I shouldn't say sometimes every month, part of our Renaissance team, we do an academic excellence board and teachers can submit names of students. Any student doesn't matter. We don't ask why right. just for their academic efforts. And I remember a particular student. Her name was Catherine. Um, she was in my math class. It was the third time she had to take this math class and school was not her favorite. Um, but especially math <laughs> right. and she, it was second semester and, you know, she was, we were getting along great. She was doing so well and she was passing this time and everything was going awesome. And her mom and her came to see me at parent teacher and we, in our school, we set up our tables in our cafeteria area in our upper lobby. And my table is always across from our academic excellence board. And all of the, it is every month, just so you know, the names that the teachers send in that they want to recognize for academics, those students we have a theme and we put them on like a little shape. So I think that was March. So we had like a gold pot with the gold coin. So all the names were on these gold circles. And I was talking to her mom and her at parent teacher and the conversation was wrapping up. I said, oh, before you go, Catherine, make sure you check the board. Your name is over there. She's like, what? I said, yeah, your name is up there on that board. And her mouth dropped. You could not have seen a kid get up quicker out of that seat to run across the hall to look and find her name. And then her mom, of course, comes over and she finds her circle. She's standing there pointing at the circle. And her mom takes her picture with her cell phone. Like that just gave that girl so much confidence to get through to the end of the year. And it all like to us, we think sometimes it's just a piece of cardboard or a piece of cardstock or a piece of paper. But to those kids, sometimes it means so much more. So, OK, I love that. The, the other thing that I really connect with and I'm so I'm so grateful you said this is that about you using the analogy of history. Cause if you flip that, I mm -hmm. would be the kid in the history class who would have loved it and hated the math class. Right. And, right. and there was a lot of it, um, where there's nothing. You, I hate saying this cause, but it's true. There's nothing you could do to get me to like certain subjects.